In this video, I'm gonna help you to plan your home network for 2021. I'm gonna outline all of the components and how they work together. We're also gonna talk about the type of devices that connect to your home network and how we can segregate them from the other devices. By the end of the video, you should have the tools and the knowledge to actually think about building your own home network with all of the smart gadgets that we have for now. Stick around to the end where I'll be sharing my current network and I'll be sharing my plans for 2021 to upgrade them. This is Gio from Smart Home Makers and let's roll the intro. In simple terms, you have two ways to connect the devices to the internet. You can either use an ethernet port with an ethernet cable, or you can use Wi-Fi for uh, devices that don't have an ethernet port. Prefer to use a connection if you can over using Wi-Fi, but obviously Wi-Fi is more flexible as the device can move around the house without actually being tied to a cable. I've got a simple diagram here to actually illustrate how this all works. So as you can see, we've got the internet here on the top. We have a modem, which is normally provided by your ISP. You would have a router, which would be provided by your ISP, but I would be recommending you to upgrade this router if you're serious about home networking. Some routers have Wi-Fi incorporated, but I have a separate device, which is an AP, that stands for access point. And this access point, I've got a couple of them in the house, actually allows my devices like my iPhone, my tablet, and my uh, Alexa to connect without actually having a, a cable, an ethernet jack. Connecting to the router, we have the switch. The switch allows us to extend the ports that you have on the router. So the router might have a couple of, of ports and the switch, you can have a bigger switch with uh, multiple ports. In this example, I'm showing you, you, you then can connect a PC, PlayStation 5, a NAS, or an IP camera. Uh, these switches, some of these switches are managed switches and they have the capabilities to do VLANs, which I'm gonna explain later on what they are. And some of the switches that I have, have a PoE, which is power over ethernet. And that allows you to power some of these devices without actually having uh, needing a power cable. For example, my IP camera is a PoE camera but not all devices are POV compatible. And now I'm actually gonna show you how this is all wired up. Okay, so as you can see in the diagram, we've got it sort of mapped out and here we've got some of the devices. So this first device, this is a Unify USG router. Okay, so this would be in the diagram, this component over here. So I haven't got the modem here to show you because it's actually in my uh, cupboard, I'll put some uh, B-roll up to it so you can actually see it. But the modem uh, is really stuck there and you can't really change it. There's a cable coming out of the modem, okay? And this cable, we gotta pretend it's this one. And then this cable will go into your, so you've got a few ports here. And then this model, it will go into the WAN port. WAN stands for Wide Area Network, okay? So you would just click it in like this. Okay, so this will be your starting point of your network and this end will be in the modem. Okay, so let's pretend there's a modem there. After here, we, can, we have two things linked up. We have a, a switch and we have an access point. So as you can see here, I have one of my access points that were on the wall. It's a bit uh, used, it's been there for a few years. And this is a ubiquity uh, access point. Now this specific model is actually power over ethernet. So what you would do is, you would connect it in as normal with one of these ethernet jack, okay? And then you would connect this end to a PoE enabled switch. So PoE again is power over ethernet. But assuming what you would do is, you would just connect it inside here, okay? So you make the connection. So this is simulating this, right? So the data is can able to move, right? We're moving, we're creating this network, okay? So this guy here is for your Wi-Fi. And now all of your devices connect to this and then this through this access point, they connect to the router, router connects to the modem, modem connects to the internet. Another component I have, this is a uh, old Netgear switch that I have. This is not a PoE or it's not even a managed switch, but this is just to illustrate how you make the connections. So you would take 
one end, you would connect it into the switch, okay? And now you can actually have, if you had another cable here, for example, you can start connecting some of these devices. You can connect this IoT gateway, you can connect it to the switch, and the switch is connected to the uh, Unify router. But do remember that one port you lose it because that's the connection coming from here. So you would be able to connect only four devices into this device. So it's important to understand what type of devices are gonna to connect to the internet in our home network. So we have different type of devices and we might create different rules depending on what the device is, okay? So let's start uh, simply from infrastructure. So infrastructure devices are the devices that power your home network. So for example, a switch, or the router that we uh, looked at previously. So all infrastructure will need to have a few things uh, really that we wanna set. What we would wanna set is something called static, static IP. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that, so each device will get an address, okay? It's a bit like your home address. And when devices talk to each other, they need to state the device, so the address that they want to send information to and the device that they're receiving information from, okay? So by having infrastructure as static IP addresses, that means that you don't, their, their address never changes, okay? It's always the same address. So an address, for example, could be something like 192.168.1.1. .1. So some of the default routers that you have, have like a default admin password. So that's always good to change the password. These standard devices will be able to need uh, access to the internet, right? And they'll probably also have access to CCTV, IoT devices, so smart home devices that have access to the infrastructure devices. So the standard devices will will have the most level of access. So this could be a mobile phone, your computer, network attached storage. So a lot of networks, when they come out uh, of the box, everything will be standard. So everything will be treated in the same way. What we're trying to do is we're trying to create these categories so then we can plan our network accordingly. CCTV, sometimes you want this to access the internet. This is based on if you want to be able to see your camera footage through the internet, right? And there are secure ways of doing that. If you don't want that, so if you perhaps not interested in exposing your CCTV to the internet, then uh, what you will need to do is you'll need to do something like local. So you need some local PC. Uh, I'm simplifying this, but there are software, there are tools like Blue Iris. With NASes, you have surveillance systems, NVRs, which are sort of devices that you can attach to the network to record. For example, if you have Nest devices, they'll need to talk to the internet. Uh, you, you know, that's how they set up because they do cloud recording. Let's talk about the kids devices. So the kids devices, what you want to do is they might need some sort of access to the internet, right? But what we want to do is we want to filter, filter the content, right? This will depend a lot on their age, but normally you want to filter the content, right? You want to filter, um, you know, what kids can actually do. So you might have different rules based on if the device is, a, is, is tagged as kids, for example. The guest network is basically for any person or, uh, you know, that comes in your home that wants, needs access to the internet. We will give them access to the internet. Then again, most of the times, uh, it's not full access to the internet, so we can set a cap in terms of the data. So the, the, a data cap on how much uh, they can transfer, okay? So the, you know, the guest is not gonna use up all of our bandwidth. You do not want the guest to be able to access anything from kids network. Maybe you might want them to access some internet IoT devices but normally the guest network is quite isolated. So it will, it will sit, sit in its own bubble. The IoT network, now this is gonna be the most difficult one to actually set up because the IoT network, now some devices 
talk to the internet. Some devices are only uh, local, which and they will need to interact perhaps with some specific devices. So as you know, I use Home Assistant as my automation platform, which I'm going to abbreviate as HA. And Home Assistant will have an IP address, my example, dot one five nine. So what I would want is I would want my so let me use the green here. I would want the IoT devices to talk to Home Assistant, but basically banned from talking from to anything else. So we don't want the IoT devices out of the box talking to a standard network or basically anything else. If you can, just completely lock it down. So just lock down the IoT network so they can't actually access the internet. That's your plan. And what you need to do is, is you need to figure out how many devices are gonna fall into each category. You might build this out over time. So you might, you could have to start with the infrastructure and standard network, that's how you get going. And then as you add things in, you can have all of your devices in the standard network and then move things along as you start creating your IoT network, you create your guest network, your kids network. And what you want to do is you want to go into each of these network and then test that things work. So I'm going to give you my tour of my own home network. My home network is built for the majority of my components with Unify equipment. The Unify is actually a brand of Ubiquiti networks. So to access this Unify network, I go to the my URL of the cloud key. So I use 192.168.1.3. Okay, so by logging in, in here, we can have a good overview of what's going on. Now, the reason why we haven't got any internet capacity, because I'm currently using an edge router, which is another product of uh, Ubiquiti. So I'm going to be migrating from an edge router to the USG that I showed you earlier in the video. That's going to allow me to have one dashboard with all of my rules and I can set firewall rules and create VLANs and everything all in one interface. And it makes it a bit easier for me. We have devices, so these are the three devices that I'm using. We have the uh, Unify switch, eight, so eight stands for eight ports, PoE 60 watts, so that's the power that we're able to deliver via the PoE ports. Four of the ports, these ports here are PoE ports. Uh, we have that access point that I showed you earlier that I disconnected and I, I put them back in place. And I've got another access point, which is an in-wall access point, which I installed in another video, which I'm going to put a card up somewhere here. And you can go and check that one out if you're interested in, uh, in how I got that one sorted. If I click on the clients, I actually see the whole list of everything that's connected to my network at this moment. There's not everything that can be connected, but it's everything that's currently connected, okay? And we have a device, device name, and you can rename your devices. And I would uh, suggest you do. And you can see by the connection type, some are connected via LAN. And we have uh, most in connected to Ebsfleet Valley. And we have IoT 251 and IoT 251 dash downstairs, which is a separate access point. So as you can see, this access point has actually two uh, S Wi-Fi SSIDs. We also have this interesting experience where you can actually look at what is working well or what isn't working well. And you have also your activity down, activity up, and your uptime. Also have a guest network set up, but there are no guests in the house due to current restriction so I can't show you that how that works but it's there and it's configured for them now going forward what I'm going to do is I'm going to be creating VLANs and I'm going to be using VLANs to start segregating and blocking traffic between IoT devices and main devices but what I'll be also be doing is creating specific rules for specific devices for example like Chromecasts to actually allow them to poke a hole in and actually allow them to communicate inwards. Now, at this stage from, and in this video, we're just planning things, but in future videos, I hope I'm gonna be able to crack this and get a good working solution. But in the meantime, let's move on to the learning and research part of the video. So if you go to my channel, there's a playlist, home networking playlist. 
in my channel Smart Home Makers. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. But there's also going to be a lot of other channels that actually uh, are really, really good, good and are like a gold mine to get into networking and IoT networks. The first one is uh, from The Hookup and he's got a, a free video part series on uh, actual this topic and he uses Unify equipment. So if you want to use Unify equipment, this is really good free videos, <coughs> take notes because, and there's also a blog, supporting blog post that you can go check out. And we have Chris from Chris Talk Solutions. He has another video, really good video, secure IoT network video, where he goes through how to secure an IoT specifically network. He's using an edge router X in that video, but then he uses Unify equipment, right? So if you have a mixed approach, we have other YouTubers, we have uh, Mal Telecom Networks, She's, he's got a good video. We have a few uh, up and coming channels like Inside Wire and Frog Tech, which I think the videos are worth checking out if you want to support a smaller YouTuber and you subscribe to those channels. And then we have uh, Willy, which he's another uh, networking guru on, uh, on YouTube, and he's got a really good video on how to secure IoT. Now, what I would say as part of your learning. These the videos are actually, uh, they do it slightly differently. The principles are the same. You can use um, different types of equipment, principles are the same, but I would always come up with your own plan of how you want to tackle it. And you might learn and, and you know bits from other videos and then you'll make your own network and make your own decisions. There's no right way of doing this, right? So it's going to be really up to you. If you want to find out more about building a smart home, then I'm going to leave you a couple of playlists so you can check out the best videos from Smart Home Makers. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next video.